churches with the best heaters and the best air conditioners that you could want to have. We got the best preachers that I've ever heard of in this area and around this surrounding place. But for some reason, we find ourselves hung up on what the devil has to say. We find ourselves getting hung up on what the devil has to offer. Oh, it's so good out there where he's at. He's so much better out there where he's at. The Lord said, I've got all you have need of. And not only that, I will run your cup on. Come on. But yet still, we find ourselves wondering out in the Garden of Eden, looking for something a little better. You know, that's all it was. Eve just wanted something a little better. Eve got bored. She got hung up at where she was at. Instead of saying, Lord, I've got to have more of you, she said, Lord, I'll just see what the devil has to offer. Amen. You know what your problem is? You know what your problem is? You're hung up. You're caught up in what the devil says. Amen. Come on now. God ain't good enough for you no more. What God has to offer ain't good enough for Come you on, no man. more. But man, what the devil said seems yeah. so good. Come on. Come on. Oh, he started telling you, oh man, if you just if you just do this, if you just partake in this, man, I'm gonna take you places. Man, I'm gonna lift you up higher. Man, I'm gonna put you in places. I'm gonna make you as God as he tells me. But let me tell you what, all he's trying to do is just take you deeper and deeper and Come on. deeper. Come on. It says, he says you'll be as gods, knowing good and evil. Man, he just talks about how great it's going to be. Man, it's going to be wonderful. If you just partake of this little bit of sin, you just eat of this one tree. Oh, it's just one tree that he says not to eat. You know what? I find ourselves, find us, not me, you. Let me back that up. You know what I find you doing? You know what I find you partaking in? See, what it is is you think that you know what is good and evil. You think you know everything that you're supposed to know. But let me tell you what, without his help, without his grace, without his mercy, you will never make it. But the whole time, you're like a tornado. You're just spinning further oh. and further out of control. Oh. Why? Because you think you know oh. what is good and evil. You think you got it all figured out because you got the sin under control. But baby, you're fooling yourself. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Man, I wish I could have had time to get this together. It says here in verse 6, it says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired, desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit. You know what got her? It says sin looks so good to a curious mind. You know what happened? You quit focusing on the things right. of God. You quit focusing on everything else that was in your, in your life. Everything else that God was doing. But you decided to be curious a little bit. You decided to wander on a little bit. See what the devil had to offer. And the next thing you know, you've done took of the fruit. Come on, man. Come on. Sin looks good. To a curious mind. You know, when you got that mind wandering places, when that mind is the hands of the, the devil's, out of hands of the devil's workshop, it all goes hand in hand. When you're sitting there and that mind of yours has free time, when your mind has time to idle, when your mind ain't occupied with the things of God, when your mind ain't focused on leaving and going to heaven, when your mind ain't made up on I'm living for God till I die, I'm going to serve Him till I die wholeheartedly. I'm going to give Him all I got. When your mind ain't focused on that, you'll find yourself being curious. And you wonder, man, how in the world did I end up here? Oh. Well, you let your curiosity get the best of you. Amen. Oh. See, when you find yourself curious of something, you'll find yourself on a dilemma. Come on. We went to Mer the other side of Meridian today. You know why? Man got curious. 
biggest rule that we live by, cooperative energy. If it's working, leave it alone. If it's working like you're supposed to, leave it alone. When you start messing with something, guess what? You're going to fool around and tear it up. There I was up there today in that bucket truck having to fix something. Why? Because somebody got curious. Somebody got to wonder about, well, I wonder if we just fool with this just a little bit. You know what they fooled around and done? They broke it. You know what happens to you? Your mind gets to wonder. You get to thinking about how good it is over across the lake. You get to wondering about how awesome it is out there in the world. And the next time you know, you look up and find it. You don't know your message. Yeah. Right. 
That's what got her where she was at. Let me 
know that let me know that if you lay down with dogs, you will get fleas. You know what that lets me know? You get around somebody that's dabbling in the same thing that you are. You get to hang around somebody that partakes in the same thing that you do. You'll find yourself, you ain't laying down with God's people no more. You're laying down in the slop. You're laying down in the hog pen. You're wondering, how in the world did I get here? How in the world did I turn myself in? You kept playing around with the fleas. It says in verse 7 here, after they eat of the tree, it says, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. I wrote down right here, them and you know. Them and you know. I believe that Adam and Eve looked and they realized that they had made a mistake. I believe that they looked and they understood that they had made a mistake. I believe that they realized the circumstances that they had found themselves in. Let me tell you something tonight. You can turn your nose up at me. You can turn your head the other way. You can lash and touch you whatever you want to do. You know. Come on. That's true. You know. Come on. I don't believe I'm preaching to folks that ain't never been to church before. I just don't believe it. I believe I'm, I'm preaching to folks that's been in church all their life, with the exception of maybe a few. But most of us have been here long enough to know what's right and to know what's wrong. So it's not no shocker to me you can say, man, my eyes are open. No, you know Adam and Eve did too. You didn't have to come up to them and whisper in there and say, hey, man, you messed up. Come on. It says their eyes were open and they knew. They knew it. They knew it. Come on. You know what that lets me know? And then you ain't got to be a fool to understand what was going on here. It says here, it says they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They realized that they wasn't dressed appropriately anymore. They didn't have on. They looked around and probably said, man, what are we doing? Think about this. You're talking about people that never knew they were naked. And then all of a sudden, they had the mind to understand that they were inappropriate. They had a new mind to understand that they were wrong for what they were doing. And what's so sad is, we walk around here day after day after day, and we never realize that we're living wrong. Come on. Verse 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord, God walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Hang on to me right here. This is where I want to preach to you. On hiding in the bushes. Oh, I lost somebody right there. Hiding in the bushes. Let me tell you what. I said all that to get you to right here. You know what the problem is? You've gotten too comfortable right. in the bushes. You've gotten too complacent staying in the bushes. All see, we find here, and after the eyes was open, they realized that the fig leaves and the apron that they had made wasn't near enough. So they began to wander around and find somewhere to hide. They began to find that somewhere to get. Then they said, Lord, not me. I can't be seen by God. Come on. So I believe that it was. Come on. Come on. They began to look Come on. and wonder. Because why? They knew that he was coming back. Right. Woo! Come they on. knew Come that on. he was coming back. They Come knew. On. Because why? Day after day after day, they had experienced. Walking and living with God. Oh, they knew oh, what it was like when he right. come down by the Paul and he touched that spirit. Oh. He knew they knew what it was like when God yeah. come in and was blessed their heart. And then they said, Lord, he's coming back. Lord, he's coming back. What kind of world do we live in? We live in a world where you know that he's coming oh. back. He said, I go away to oh. prepare a place for you. That's where I am. There you may be also. Oh. You know that. You believe that, but somewhere along the way, you just found hiding in 
your boots. Come on. You're hiding. Yeah. Hoping that God don't see you. Yeah. Come on. Preach, oh, man. You find yourself hiding. Hoping he don't see you. It says, and he came in the cool of the day. Yep. I thought about that. I said, Lord, why the cool of the day? Why the cool of the day? But it says, not at night, because he knew that they would be fearful. They would be upset. They would be worried. Because you can imagine how it is when you've been living in the land of endless day. And all of a sudden, you're surrounded by nighttime. I believe they begin to get a little fearful. Concerned. I believe they would have got concerned about, man, it's dark out here. What are we supposed to do? Maybe he's going to come. It would have made them fearful. Not in the hottest part of the day, because that would have showed them that he may have been angry. Because when you get hot and sweaty, most of the time when you're hot, you become easily irritated. He couldn't come then. He did not want to come in any other way that would cause them any concern. But it said that he chose the cool of the day. Because why? That was when they would have been in their most comfortable state. I believe that he come every day in the cool of the day. I believe it was a sign for them to know that my God is not coming in anger. He's not coming in, in, in some kind of fearful manner. But he's coming when I'm the most comfortable. He's coming when I'm in a place that he can deal with me. He's coming to me in a place when I need him most. And most of the time, it's when everything's going good. Right. Right. It would be the cool of the day. I thought about that. I said, Lord, how many times? How many times have you come to me in the cool of the day? How many times has it seemed like there's just so much going on around me, and yet you still find a way to show up and bring the cool of the day to me in my day, in my situation? Oh, man, it seemed like they were just, you know, for Adam and Eve. Man, they're in this is predicament. They're in this situation. There again, a situation that they put themselves in. A situation that they made for themselves. A situation that they walked right into. But somewhere along the line, God said, I've got a cool day just ahead for you. I've got a cool day coming for you. And I'm coming to see you. Come on. I thought about us. We're right where we need to be in this situation, in this time. I believe we're in the last days before his return. I believe that he's trying to come and bring us a cool day, a time to bring you back, a time to get you back to where you need to be before it's too late. But I find, I find myself that there that we're just spending too much time amongst the trees of the garden. We're too busy wandering around trying to hide, hope that God won't see us. Woo! Amen. Let me tell you, them all. I won't see your face. I won't see you look at me like that. But let me tell you what. You know, we find ourselves wandering amongst the trees. This is kind of the way I thought about it. I don't care if you get mad at me or not. We find ourselves hiding amongst the trees. Come on, Come on now. Come on. I've been going here all my life. I know how to Come on. You think that if you wander right up here, you keep a safe distance. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, if I just come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Look around and see if somebody's coming to put their hand on your back. Come on, you pray, ain't you? You getting down to business with God, ain't you? You praying that He comes by in the cool of your day. You hide. Come on. You think you're fooling God. Right. Come on. You think you're getting away with just getting close. Right. You think as long as you're up around here, you're going to be fine. Right. Let me tell you, you ain't grabbing my coattail going out here. No. You ain't grabbing Sister Melissa. <laughs> you ain't grabbing the pastor. You will go on your own coat. 
You will stand before God on your own. You will face him and look him eye to eye on your own. Yeah. You can't go on my anointing. You can't go on my salvation. You can't right. go on my sanctification. You can't go on my Holy Ghost. But let me tell you, if you plan on getting your feet off the ground, it will be your own salvation. It will be your own sins being forgiven and washed in the blood. That will get you off the ground. It won't be me. It won't be my mama. It won't be my granny and grandpa. But let me tell you, you will leave the ground if you got your own sins covered and you get water and hide in the It says they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. You know what that lets me know? Back when they would have got in. I'm just using that as we do now. Come on. If they'd have been having church tonight and Adam and Eve come in, there would have been a time that you would have beat them to an altar. Right. There would have been a time you wouldn't have had to stand up and beg them to testify. Come on. You wouldn't have had to call Adam and beg him to have a song ready to sing tonight. You wouldn't have had to call Adam if he was a preacher and say, Bob, hey, I need you to preach tonight. Hey, man, I ain't had enough time. Right. You wouldn't have had time to look at Adam or Eve and say, hey, we need you to be praying up for the sermon. Brother, I've been praying all day. Yeah. Yeah. But slowly but surely, they begin to hide themselves right. from the presence of the Lord. That's right. You know what happens? We quit getting in. That's right. Come on. You know what happens? We quit pursuing God. Come on. We quit, we quit going to the rock. Right. As the Bible says, that is higher than I. Yeah. I go to the place that God has prepared for me. We quit going to an altar. We quit finding ourselves praying. We quit finding ourselves yeah. spending time with God. And we get hung up in what the devil has done. We're hiding in the bushes. Yes. We're hiding in the bushes. We think that as long as we fool the church people, come on now, I didn't talk to before, I thought I was fooling y'all for a long time. Yeah. But guess what? I was still a sinner. Yeah. I was still lost and on my way to hell. Come on. But God looked at me and he said, boy, you about fooled long enough. You've got here long enough. Right. Let me tell you what. Me personally, I'm tired of having to preach like this. And I go other places, man, I get to preach all these high, lovey dovey sermons, and I come back in as this. Come on. Let me tell you something tonight. God's about through fooling you. God's tired of seeing you hide in the bushes. God's tired every time he looks for you, he can't find you. Because every time he looks to you, you got yourself hung up trying to get out of the way. Let me tell you, God put a calling on your life. God has something for each and every one of us to do. He has something. I, I'm trying to hurt. He has something for each one of us to do. He didn't call you to live in this life that you're in. He didn't call you to be in this place that you're in. He called you to lift up and to magnify His name. I preached to you a while back. What did I tell you? We are created to sit in heavenly places. He created you and designed you to go to heaven. But for some reason, you keep hiding in the bushes. You keep getting hung up in whatever it is. You like the old ram stuck in the thicket. You just trying to. You want to get out, but Lord have mercy. You just lock it back over in the bushes. Why? That's where you want to be. No. That's sad, man. That, that breaks my heart. Amen. I wrote down there, and it says they hid from the presence of the Lord. Right. You know what that lets me know? It was a sad, sad change. Right. Man, when I was reading that a while ago, and I was sitting on there, and I was looking, I said, man, what a sad, sad change to go from basking in the goodness yeah. of God. Come on. To turn it around. To be hiding in the bushes. Right. Man, that's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. 
There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than being caught doing something you ain't got no business. That's right. Can I be honest with you tonight? I remember it wasn't too long after I got called to preach. The Lord was convicting me about some things. About the way I was dressed. I remember going in to play a little basketball one night and I was not dressed like I should have been dressed. Like I'm dressed now if you see me. I remember walking in there, man, I was decked out. I was cool. I was looking the way I was supposed to look to be playing basketball. But what I didn't even tell was when I walked up, that man said, hey, Brother James, how you doing? He said, man, he said, pretty good all through. Come on, I'm just being honest with you. I looked around and I said, hmm. I said, Lord, if you'll let me get out of here. If you'll let me get out of here with my dignity still intact. I said, I'll fix that. He had been dealing with me about it for a while, but I kept hiding in the bushes. Come on. I remember I was sitting over there and I remember being so uncomfortable, so uncomfortable. The whole night after that, I just sit around kind of fooled with my clothes. You know, I put, I had a jacket on, I zipped it up, but I, I was just so embarrassed right. that I wanted to go get in the car and go home. Go. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed by the way I looked. God dealt with me about that. You laugh, it's funny, I don't care. Come on. Come on. I'm telling you my heart. Right. I had to make a change. Yeah. I had to quit hiding in the bushes. I had to get out from where I was at and say, if I'm going to be what God wants me to be, then I'm going to do what He has me to do. He can be my way. He can be a certain way and dress him in at me and talk in a certain way. Then I'm going to do whatever He wants me to do. Hallelujah. 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 You've been hiding. You've been hiding for a long time. But as we read here in verse 9, it says, And the Lord God called unto heaven and said unto him, What? Where art thou? As I looked at that, you know, it doesn't say, doesn't say that he walked out there with a megaphone. Where are you? That ain't what he said. Come on. Where are thou? I don't believe he got a bill, just a regular boy. Come on. Where are thou? Mm -hmm. But I believe it rang all through oh, yeah. your ears. Come on. As loud as it could be. Well, it did. I believe that he just looked at us. Tell you what. Let me tell you what. God's easing up to some of you. And he's in your ear and he says, Where are you? Come on, Come on now. He's looking for you. He's beckoning for you. And he's standing over your shoulder and he goes, Hey, where are you? Come on. Where are you? Where are you? He knew where they were at right. the whole time. Right. Got a said, what you been doing? I've been, I've been wondering where you got off to. Why are you hiding in the bushes? You know you're supposed to be doing that. Why don't you come on back home? Amen. Come on, man. Get out from behind the bush. Yes. Oh, man. Quit doing what you're doing. Come on. Come on. Quit doing what you've been doing. Come on. Come on. Come on back home. Come on. Oh, God. Have your way, man. You've been running long enough. Come on home. 
Come on. Yes, Lord. Show it now. Come on, Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't no need to hide. Come on. Come on. You don't need to hide. Come on. I got all you need. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm going to quote Scott one more time because he preached about this same spot the other night. He dealt with their sin. Later on in this chapter, he dealt with their sin. He dealt with their sin. He gave them the punishment. But he was still looking for them. Let me tell you what. God's looking for some of you tonight. He's been looking for you for quite a while now. He's been looking. Stand all over the house tonight. you've been touched, once you felt the power, right. I believe you'll never forget. Right. Talks about when you've been changed, you become a new creature. I don't care how far you run, I don't care how far you go, you will never forget. There's several things that I'll never forget in my life. The night that I come off of the drums oh. and I stood right here, yeah. right here, yeah. I'll never forget it. That's right. Never forget it. That's right. I can take you to Fort Lake and lay on the floor, put my face on the carpet right now. Oh. The first time I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, That's right. I can take you there. I can take you to places in my life where you had to look at me and say, hey, where are you, boy? I remember nights when I was in school or when I first got out of high school. Remember the nights I lay there knowing I'm doing wrong, knowing I'm running. And it was like he was just saying, where are you? sleep one night. Got up, eased down the hall of that house trailer. I guess the Lord just worked it out this way. It was the middle of the night. Wasn't nobody up. I heard a racket down the hallway. Come down the hall, eased down the side there at the house trailer, and I look. Somebody's laid up in the autumn in the chair there with a face. I didn't know what it was. I looked a little closer. My mama down praying. I don't know if she, I don't know if I've ever told this. I eased up close enough where I could hear praying. I asked God to have. I remember getting up praying and I hear him say, God, would you save Hayden's soul? Would you come down and touch him? I don't know how many times she ever prayed after that for me. I'm sure she did, but I just remember that time in particular. I remember listening to her as she cried out, God save his soul. He needs you, God. He needs you. And I remember easing back down the hall. Paul was quiet and I couldn't run. I didn't want to hear that. I wasn't trying to hear that. And I remember laying there in that bed. I couldn't go to sleep. Why? Because I could hear him saying, where are you? What are you doing? Where are you?
bent over, had her hard hat on. That boy said, James, he said, boy, I like that sticker. He said, that's what it's all about. I thought he may have been talking about my big Florida Gator sticker on my hard hat. He said, no. I told that other boy, he said, that one up under that American flag. I'm not saying this to boast on me. I'm just telling you where I'm at. I forgot what was under that sticker. An old sticker that I had bought stuck on that hard hat. Real men love Jesus. I don't think much about it. And normally, most of the time, I put my heart hat on, I'm in a bad mood anyway, because, you know, I don't work. But that boy said, boy, James, I like this sticker. I said, you know, there was a day you wouldn't have paid me to put something like that on my heart hat. But I said, you know, I said, it does me good when they look at that hard hat. We can go all over the place deal with these other co-ops, and if I put that hard hat on, they several of them later, boy, well, I like that sticker. Real men love Jesus. I said, that's right. I said, that's right, brother. You know why? I quit hiding in the bushes. That's right. That's right. I got tired of wandering around in the bushes. I got tired of being in the place that I was in. And I said, you know what? Real men do love Jesus. Real people do love Jesus when you surrender and you quit hiding in the bushes. I'm going to do it like this tonight. I'm going to do it like this. I want you to lift your hand right now. Let's pray right now. Ask God.